Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope that you are all doing well and staying safe. Here is Mirna Ahmed, a senior petroleum geologist student at Matruh University. So on behalf of Arab Guru, SEG Tanta, Mansoura, Suhaik, Wanazayak Jayo, and AABG Cairo, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar, which will be about how to improve your resume and online presence, and it will be presented by a distinctive speaker. And I am sure that uh, his participation will benefit all attendees. So let me begin by introducing our guest speaker for today, Engineer Pietro Gali. So, uh, when, so when he first started looking for a job a few years ago, it was not easy for him. He was ignored and rejected several times, but uh, failure after failure, he studied the process and he was able to develop a method to maximize chances of landing a job. And as a result, he got heard by companies like Ferrari and uh, General Electric. Currently, Engineer Gali is a mechanical engineer and supply chain logistics lead at Baker Hills. Uh, and today he will sharing with you some tips and tricks will help you enhance your resume. And that will increase your chances of landing a job interview. So uh, welcome, Engineer Gali, and we are excited to hear from you today. Now, as a reminder, if you have any questions related to the session, please feel free to uh, uh, drop it down in Q&A section. Uh, so hope you uh, guys enjoy uh, the webinar today. And Engineer Gali, the mic is yours. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for putting this up. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, my name is Pietro. I am a, a global logistic manager for um, Baker Hughes. And, uh, and I started like many of you guys. So I think that most of the people joining right now, you are either finishing, about to finish your college, or you just finished and you just started looking for, for a job. And I know how hard uh, it can be. And um, so what are we going to do in the next uh, hour or so that we're going to be together? I'm going to do my best to give you some practical tips uh, that will help you maximizing your chance of getting a job. We're going to take a look at two main areas, which is going to be your resume, your CV, however you want to call it, and your LinkedIn profile, your online presence. Everything that we're going to do today will increase your chances of landing a job. I want to give you some very practical tips, um, something that you can use right now. So I'm super excited to be with you today. And uh, hopefully this is going to be it. Uh, this is going to be helpful and will help you quite a bit. Uh, um, before starting, I want to excuse myself, you know, for my voice. I'm currently still under the effect of COVID. So I'm recovering. Everything is, uh, is okay. But just part of my, my voice. And guys, as said, most of you uh, are college graduates in, um, in subjects that are very particular. So for example, uh, among us, we have engineers, we have geologists, we have geophysicists, we have a lot of scientists, a very high, a difficult degree of education. And I remember when I, when I finally finished engineer school, I was like, man, why do I need to go through all of these struggle? Why was my first question? Why do I have to do it? I, I already have one of the you know, most difficult to degree to get. Why do I now need to go to all of the struggle, understanding how a resume is done, understanding how LinkedIn works, begging companies to, to, to start to hire me and to start working. And, um, and unfortunately, the reason is that Regardless our degree, regardless our final grade, how good we were during college, unfortunately, right now, our degree is not enough. It doesn't matter uh, how good we were, how difficult and how particular your uh, degree is. Competition is very high and, um, and the job offerings are more or less constant. They are a little bit increasing, but how the number of people with a degree is increasing much more than the number of jobs, which means competition is furious. That's why what we're going to do today, we're going to understand how to stand out from, from the rest of the crowd and give you some competitive advantage to 
find your dream job. Now, um, let's, let's assume that you are looking for a good candidate and you have a pile of 100 resumes and all of those resumes, more or less, more or less they look like the one on your left. Okay. And now you have one resume out of all of the other ones that look like the one on your right. Now, these two resumes are, as you can see from the pictures, from the same person. And the content of the two resumes, uh, the, one on, the one on your left, uh, it was like four pages word resume. So very long, very confusing. But the, the content that you can find inside the two resumes <coughs> is basically the same. So you can see how simply by changing the package, by changing the format, by analyzing which are the most important aspects of your experience, you can create a much different result. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that you would agree with me that if you have to choose between resume number A, the word one, and resume number B, the beautiful one, you would definitely want to have the resume number two. So let's see today together how you can turn something that looks like this into something that looks much more like our resume number two. There are a set of rules that we can apply and some tips that I'm going to give you. <clears throat> now, it's important to have clear what is a resume, a resume, a CV, curriculum vitae, however you want to call it. That thing is a piece of paper which is nothing but a marketing document. The only purpose and the only use of your resume is to trigger the interest of the recruiter, of the people who's looking for candidates, to trigger their attention just enough so that they will pick up the phone or shoot you an email and ask you to know more. So we don't have to make it extremely long. We don't have to make it extremely detailed. We need to understand who is our audience? Who will look at our resume? What do they want? And with that, we're going to create a short, simple, and effective resume that answer the question, what do they want? What does your audience want? What do the companies want? We're going to see how to answer that question. And with that, we're going to use the four golden rules that I'm going to, that I'm going to share with you right now in order to craft an amazing document. Let me, let me share that with you. So what you, look, uh, what you can see here is one of my resumes. This is one of the, I think it's like a couple of years old, a year old resume. And um, <clears throat> I created a other, but still this is a very good example of a, an impactful resume. It's very visual, it's very catchy, but at the same time, the content that this resume has re <clears throat> um, answer the question uh, to, that, that, our, that the recruiters uh, are asking and the content is relevant for the recruiter. But let's see the four golden rules. Number one, the first thing that we can notice, this resume is short, which means one page and one page only. Please guys, take note one page only. We will understand how to cut contents and how to find the gems in your experience, in your um, education, and to make it one page, very impactful, short. Second thing, it is clear. Now, by clear, I mean two things. The first thing that I mean is that it is easy to read. Okay, it is not complicated, it's not very intricate, it's, it's pretty clear, it's, it's a straightforward, you can read it in a very short time. But the second thing, and please take note of this, it has to be clear what is your job title. In other words, who's reading your resume needs to be able in one second to understand what is the problem that you're fixing. In my case, under the name, operation management engineer. If they have 10 jobs and they have jobs in marketing, in operations, uh, in, um, in sales, um, and they look at my resume, immediately they know, okay, he is an engineer and he works in operation management. So please 
under your name, big, bold, your job title. Your job title can be your current job title, okay? The job that you're doing right now. It can be the job title uh, that you are applying for, okay? Or in case you don't have a, a, a job right now, it can be your um, degree, your qualification. For example, mechanical engineer, petroleum engineer, geologist engineer, and so on. So very important. One page, clear the job title, big under your name. Third point, and if you only have to get one takeaway from the hour that we're going to pass together, I want you to remember these next two points. The first one is numerical results. What, what do I mean? I mean that I want you to think about all of the achievements that you had during college, in projects, uh, during your internships, in the other uh, part-time jobs that you have done, in your current role. Think about the achievements. Think about the projects that you have contributed, even, even if you didn't achieve that by yourself and you were part of a team. It's good. Think about <clears throat> the bigger achievement. Put that into numbers and write some numerical results in your resume. This is so incredible. Numerical results are so powerful. And, and, and recruiters love them. For example, let me, let me give you an example from my resume. Uh, line number one, under sourcing commodity manager, managed global <clears throat> raw material RFQ, saving <clears throat> $250,000. Okay, which is super clear, the benefit that that project brought to the company. Now, there could be different projects, different uh, numerical results, but please use some numbers. Remember this, 84%, 84.84% of resumes don't have or don't have enough numerical results, which means that if you can find your numerical results and put it in your resume, you instantly will be better and you will have a better resume than 85% of your competition. This is so powerful. Please um, pay attention to that. Um, in the Q&A session later, we can uh, analyze some cases on how you can get some numerical results if you don't have it on hand. And, um, but please take note of this. Um, and, and by the way, while I'm talking, if you have some uh, questions, if something is not clear, just drop it in the chat. I want to leave as much time as possible for questions later. Now, let me take a sip of water and uh, the four golden rule is about to come. Sorry. Now, the fourth point, super important as well. Your resume has to be relevant. It has to have the relevant keywords. I think that most of you has already heard the terms keywords, of course, while searching on Google, on YouTube, but they are so important for your resume. By relevant keywords, I mean that we want to tackle what is that your audience, that the companies want, and we want to show them that we have them. So there are some skills some <clears throat> qualifications, some experience, a certain wording that you need to use in your resume that immediately resonates with the companies. Plus, most of these uh, resume, most of your resumes will go through a selection steps. And the first selection step is not the first selection that your resume needs to pass it is not performed by human. It is performed by a system, a software, a machine, which is called ATS, Applicant Tracking System. So that is a piece of software that is a stupid machine that looks for specific words, for specific phrases, for specific keywords inside your resume and automatically <clears throat> tells if your resume is... Uh, approved to the next step or rejected. 
That's why keywords are so relevant. We're going to see how to find the right keywords. Again, four principles, short, clear, numerical results, and relevant keywords. Now, why are keywords so important? Let me, let me just reiterate this concept. Imagine, um, imagine that you want to open a restaurant. You go here and you open a beautiful restaurant. And, you know, the restaurant can be your resume, okay? And then you start looking for clients, for people who want to come to it at, at the restaurants. But then you realize that you are not the only restaurant. That in your city, there are hundreds of other restaurants that look exactly like yours. So what can you do? You can do two things. The first thing, you try to find a way in which your restaurant pops up in the middle of the crowd. Bam. And that's why we want our resume to be visual because it stands out from all of the other ones. And then second one, we want the right keywords because we want to give directions to people to find your restaurant. In our case, to find your resume <clears throat> among others. Now, I will, um, there are two main places in which you can find these magic keywords. The first one, the most important one, are looking at many, many job descriptions. The second one is going into companies' websites. Now, because I want this session to be a little bit more interactive, let me just drop off from the presentation. Let me show you what I mean. Now, finding keywords in job descriptions. How can you do? Let's do it. You can go in uh, uh, websites like indeed.com, monsters.com. You can use LinkedIn, okay? And you can find whatever job you, know, you are interested in. For example, in this case, let me take petroleum engineer. What you have here is so, there are so many jobs openings, okay? Look, read, and study these job descriptions, okay? They are so important. You see here, they give you all of the qualifications that they want. Let me take this other one, for example, again. You see, and they, are, they, they have and they follow certain patterns that repeats. So you can get uh, knowledgeable on what they ask. And you will start looking and you can take notes, something that I used to do. I had my Excel file for every job description uh, and for every <clears throat> job qualification. I used to put all of the keywords uh, and, the, and, the, and the skills that they, that they requested. And, uh, and by doing so, by studying multiple job descriptions, you will see what the industry requires. And this is so important because you will start crafting your resumes using these keywords, using these skills. You will cross-reference what the industry wants with what you have, and you will find all of the matches. And these are the most relevant thing that you have for that market. Now, it's important for you to go and study and do that by, by yourself. You can also do another, another trick. You can copy and paste as many job descriptions as you want. For example, I did that here. Here I have, you know, like 15 different job descriptions, okay? And then you can use this website. We're gonna copy all of these job descriptions. They are all job descriptions for petroleum engineer or something like that. You can use wordclouds.com, okay? You go on file, you go in, paste, you paste all of your job descriptions, apply, and here you go. These are all the words that repeat more often in those job descriptions. You can use word list and you can see each word, how many times it is required and it is repeated. So of course, if you find skills, now clearly you, know, you, you need to analyze the data. Of course, uh, the first words, you know, will, must, experience, engineer, of course, uh, these are, you know, uh, these are not keywords. They're just words that repeat themselves a lot. But 
you want to find the keyword and the skills among all of that that repeat themselves more often. And uh, again, I, I advise you to go and do it yourself, but at the same time, you can also use this process to quickly cross-reference and look which are the skills, the experience, and the wording that these guys use the most. I hope this is clear. Let me just drop you in the chat. Uh, let me just drop here in the chat the, um, the, this link, if I can. Uh, no, okay. Um, I'll, do, I'll do it later. I'll send you, I'll send you guys a, a file with all of the, with all of the, um, all of the link. Okay, here we go. That's, that's the link to Word Clouds. All right. Let's just, uh, let's just go on. <clears throat> and this is with the job descriptions. Same thing, exactly like that. If you know a few companies that you are very interested into, you can directly go into the company's websites and look for job descriptions in their website. That's pretty uh, straightforward. <clears throat> now, let's see again the, the process. Let's, let's put everything together. We have the keywords, we have the, um, we have the, the golden rules, but let's see the process. First thing, we want to know what our audience want, the keywords, okay? Second thing, we cross-reference the keywords, what the audience want, what the companies want, with what you have. So they required um, um, uh, field experience, okay? And you have done an internship in field. Amazing. That's a very big point that you want to highlight in your resume, okay? Or for example, they require, <clears throat> they require um, knowledge of supply chain, and you have done a, an achievement, you have a big achievement in running. Okay, probably it's not a, 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 a big match. If you don't have space and you need to save space in your resume, you can eliminate that part because it is not relevant for the audience. Finally, you create, you build your resume following the four golden rules. So what my uh, audience want, you can find a job description, company website, and we will see Using LinkedIn, you can also connect with other people. And I'm going to give you uh, also a Facebook group that I have created for, you know, to help young professional connecting to each other, answering questions, and you can network there. <clears throat> then, as you said, cross-reference what they want with what I have and creating the resumes with the four golden rules. Now... To conclude the uh, resume part, um, and then <clears throat> maybe we can do the LinkedIn and, um, and I can get a few, a few questions because I want to leave as much time as possible for questions. Let me give you a few tools that can help you in the process. Now, you have Canva.com, super famous website. They have a lot of free templates. Most of them you have to pay for, but it's still a good website. You know, I would recommend that. Second tool that you can use is myperfectresume.com. It's very fast. Uh, they help you in uh, creating a visual resume. Um, they don't have anything for free, so you need to pay. That is not super expensive, but um, and it could be you know a good alternative. And now for the first time, um, I want to present to you. Um, third option, which is Job Wizard, that is a company that I am collaborating with. And um, what they do, they have two services. So one, you can go on the company website and you can download some templates that are absolutely free, fully customizable, that I made myself for them to, you know, in order to be available for free to as many people as possible. So I'm going to give you the, <clears throat> the link. You can go and download your free templates. Those are a few interesting resume templates that I made myself, PowerPoint format. You can edit all of them 100% and, and they will help you. At the same time, for you that, that have participated in this webinar, I agreed a 50% discount on the tailor-made service. 
So if you want a professional that, take care, that takes care of you, that draft your resume completely customized, you can do that still on the website, 50% um, off. You don't have to, to do it. It's just an option that I, that I wanted to get for the ones who were interested. Let me show you the website. This is, uh, this is the website. I'm collaborating with them. We are creating a lot of educational content. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of work and it's very nice, you know, trying to help as many people as possible getting their job. You can get the, the food service here, but here for free, you just go here, you drop your email, they will send you the fully customizable templates uh, that you can use. Otherwise, learn more and, uh, and here, you know, you, they have artificial intelligence that find the best keywords. You have one, one by one um, consulting. Uh, yeah, and all of that, I think, for about $50 or so, something like that. Again, you don't have to do it. It's just something that I'm very proud of that I wanted to present you because it, it's helping a lot of people. And, um, and plus, you have all of the free part. Let me just uh, share the link uh, with you. All right, now let's go back to the, the slide. And again, any questions? I see uh, we, we have some. Um, OK, we have some questions already. <clears throat> Feel free to keep on dropping them. We will get, uh, uh, we'll get to, you know, I'll, I'll address all of them. As I said, job wizard, 50% off, love this job. I'm going to give you these, um, this link as well. This is a, a Facebook group that I created. I have um, about 500 people right now. Any questions that you have during the, the process on how to create a resume, how to create a cover letter, how to network with people, what you know, difficult questions that you might be scared. How can I answer this question? I created this group in order to answer all of your questions uh, and, and help you in the process and also for you guys to network with each other and help each other out. And if you want Tales of Startup, this is my YouTube channel. I constantly do live sessions where I get people's resume, I review it, I give tips uh, and so and so on. Um, I will share this uh, PowerPoint with you. Just, it's a lot of material, a lot of things. Uh, it's a few years that I've been doing that and uh, I hope this can help you, this can set you up for success. All right, before going uh, to LinkedIn, which is very important, uh, we are perfect on time, I'm very happy of that. I would like to address some of the questions uh, in order you know, to close this topic. And um, let me just maybe take a three or you know, two or three questions uh, uh, and, and then we can, we can move on to, to LinkedIn. I don't know, uh, Mirna, do you have any questions that uh, was sent yes. us first? Uh, I'll take the chance to drink a little bit. Okay, oh, please share, have, share whatever question. Um, I have like four questions. First one, um, Mirna say, I am first graduate and I don't have any experience what I write in my CV. Ah, <clears throat> amazing question. Okay, this is, that's, that's, 100% of the time, I get this question. This is a very good one, and I'm glad that you asked them. So when you don't have, um, when you don't have um, experience, um, you think that you don't have experience, but in reality, you do. So there are a few things um, that you can do in order to uh, fill that gap. So first thing that you can do, read about, and again, read all of the job descriptions, uh, understand what are the keywords that they are asking. And with that, try to think, is there any projects, university projects that you have done? Something that you know, resembled real life. Probably you had done something, something relevant, good, use it. I give you this example. When I was hired by Ferrari, I didn't have any experience. But I had a university, uh, one university project that I did very interesting. It was a big project um, on supply chain improvement. So I, I, I put that on my CV, you know, university project on this topic, supply chain improvement. Uh, you, I used this skill, this skill, and this other skill. They were looking for someone 
who was uh, knowledgeable on supply chain, they saw my, my project and they called me back because of that. So think about any projects that you have. Think about your, your thesis, your, your dissertation, um, anything that matches in your university path, anything and any skills, any project that you have that matches what is requested by the companies, put it. Second thing, if you see that there are certain skills that are required, for example, uh, you need to be able to use uh, a particular software, and this is requested by many companies, you can invest a few dollars, not, not, not much, and uh, go on Udemy, udemy.com. There are many uh, learning platforms. And for example, all of, the, all of the work that Professor Algary is doing helps as well. And you can find online courses that gives you a sort of certification on those skills. So for example, let me give you an example, mechanical engineer, SolidWorks, a CAD design software, software, you can go with $10 and get a full course on that. Excel, macro, perfect. I did a course with, for $10 and I, and I mastered you know, Excel advanced level. This, th that looked very nice on my resume. So think about your project, internship, other projects that you have done and, and include that. Then look at all of the hard skills, software and stuff that you can learn with other courses Take those courses and put the certification and write that you are knowledgeable on, on that uh, area. I took a long time to answer this question, but this is so important. And, I, and I'm sure that there are so many people in that uh, situation. I hope this was uh, helpful. Okay, we have another question. Uh, for a fresh graduate who doesn't have any work experience or field training, but have been an active member of SPE and has attended many virtual training, can he use this experience under the section work experience? Okay, very interesting. So it, it, we connect to what we just, uh, to what we just said. Uh, maybe, maybe don't call it work experience, maybe call it relevant projects or something like that, because it wasn't, let's say, a, a work per se. But absolutely yes, absolutely yes. Use it, and this is this is why all of that all of that effort was done. This is why all of the, those experts were called to talk to you to give you some real knowledge, useful knowledge that you can use uh, to find to find a job and to be more skilled. So yes, absolutely. Attend as many events, attend as many webinars as you can. And yes, use the knowledge that you learned, that you got from those webinars, from those courses. Maybe call it projects, okay? Relevant projects, relevant knowledge, so, something like that. Relevant experience, maybe. Okay. Um, there is a difference between resume and CV. Uh, other, other nice question, other nice question. So let me, um, if, your, if your goal is getting a job no there is no difference okay this is it's uh no in theory if you want to look at the little differences we can say that the resume it's it's a short version of your experience whose uh, which purpose is to get you a job so you send a resume to private companies a cv it's something more academical, it's longer, it has all of the list of your publications and stuff, but this is the, the, the you know, dictionary difference. But in common language, if our goal is to find a job, no, we can use them as a synonym. So don't, uh, don't stress yourself out too much on, on that difference. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, okay, what about adding personal details or um, immigration states and passport expiry details? Mm, okay, I interesting. So that, that varies a lot on the countries that you are applying for. Um, in general, I would suggest uh, avoiding any personal experience. For example, marital status. 
single, married, absolute, no, don't, don't include that. Sex, male, female, unknown, non-binary, don't include that. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, if and only if you have, there, there are some limitations and that is specifically required in the job description, you can add some content on your visa status, on your passport status. I'll give you an, an example. Many jobs in the United States, they say the position will not sponsor. So I don't know if any of you have tried to work in the United States. It's a pain in the ass to, to get uh, admitted. And you need to be sponsored uh, if you're not a citizen or if you don't have the green card. So uh, if you are an international person, for example, like me, and you have the, the right to work, maybe you can specify that in your resume. But this is a very specific case. In general, if it is not requested, yes, you can, you can avoid all of those personal information. What is important is your name, maybe your city, not the full address. Don't, don't put the full address. Your city and, and, and nation, you know, your city and country, that, that's enough. And um, a contact back and some information to contact you back, maybe a phone number and an email. That's, that's it. As far as personal information, that's, that's all. Let's maybe take another question, then we move on, and then I can take all of the other questions at the, at the end. Okay, we have last question. Uh, Slam asks, I'm uh, now working in different professions from my favorite career as quality assurance specialist. I got some experience uh, in it. Is it possible to be accepted in my career in geoscience? I'm always trying to keep it in uh, touch with geoscience, but I think it's hard to get a chance in geoscience career company. Hmm. Other very interesting, interesting point when you, when you need to make, a, let's say, career switch. So um, the short answer, yes, uh, it, it, is, it is possible. A little bit longer answer is that you probably will have to play a longer game. Okay, maybe this transition will take you a few months and will not happen immediately. What can you do? You can start studying all of the job descriptions for the job that you would like to that you would like to get. Um, geology, um, what was the what was the, the job geology? Geoscience. Geoscience, perfect. So you okay? I see the question. Okay, so you have uh, perfect. So start looking at all of the job descriptions. Probably you know that matches your your experience level in geoscience uh, after after you've done that you see what are the skills that you that you need to have what are relevant aspects that they that they ask and try at the same time in your current role maybe to switch towards that area so usually to make this switch you can either try to do that within the same company, which is much easier. So for example, you are in quality, you want to switch in geoscience in the same company, it's much easier because it's, it's, it's easier for you to go talk to the manager, understand what they are looking for and, and, and propose yourself. Otherwise, if you're trying to make the switch with other companies, this is one of the very interesting cases in which you want to look at what they require, and maybe you want to invest a little bit of time to take some trainings for that specific area in geoscience. Um, so again, you need to play a little bit longer game, prepare yourself, and look what they are, um, what they are requesting and put yourself in a position in which you fulfill those requirements. So probably it will take a little bit of time. Faster thing, if you have the, that position available inside your company, try to make the switch within your company rather than looking outside. <coughs> I, think, um, I think we addressed uh, a few questions. Guys, thank you so much. There was uh, some very interesting, interesting points. Uh, let me go back. Uh, let's, let's, let's go back to the presentation and let's tackle the second super important topic. That we, that we are going to talk about today, 
which is LinkedIn and our LinkedIn presence. So you know that right now, uh, most of the many jobs are, are found using LinkedIn. And uh, this is a super powerful tool. Um, it is still growing. So you guys can, if you, if you become very active on LinkedIn, if you grow your network properly on LinkedIn, you can see so many opportunities by it. Now, to master LinkedIn, let's say there are three main areas that are very relevant, very important. The header, the skills, and the most important of all, the network. Now, let me jump to LinkedIn. We can look together at a couple of profiles. And uh, guess what? There is one thing that we talked about previously that is going to be so important for LinkedIn as well. And guess what that thing is? Spoiler alert, keywords. So the same keywords that we looked for and that we found to craft a very good resume, they are going to be used to find the good skills to put on your LinkedIn, to find the right header and job description to, um, to input in your profile and so on. So let me just uh, share you, for example, this is, this is my profile. Ah, by the way, let me, let me also give you my, my profile uh, in case, if you have any questions, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and um, you know, anything that, any question, anything that you guys have, uh, just, just let me know. And I, I, I I usually, I'm pretty good usually in answering maximum, you know, 24 hours, something like that. So let's see. This is the header right under the name. Very important. Write your job title. A few things that are relevant to find the job, what you do. You see, not, it's, it's not a description. It's just bam, 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 keywords, keywords, keywords. Supply chain logistic leader, resume improvement and advice, job interview tips, and so on. This is very important. Let me show you one of my favorite profiles. She was one of the executives in my, in my um, company. See, SWP talent at buyer. Now, super clear. You can put more keywords here like I did. Okay, more keywords, separator, and more keywords. Now, the other thing we said, uh, the skills. Now, before going to the skills section, you see that there is the about section. Now, I am not actively looking for a job. So my, and, and you know, and I create content. Uh, so my uh, about section is a little bit different than the usual about section. Let me show you Beatrice about section. This is very interesting. And you see how she has created it. You see pretty long description of what she has done. By the way, she has 15 plus years of experience. So, you know, it's a very, very qualified profile. But you see, long description, what she has done, everything relevant, and a few, you see, a few bullet points with keywords on what are the skills, the strength of this person. Important about section. You can, you can be as long as you want. You remember I asked you one page and one page only on, uh, on, um, on your resume. Here, you can be a little bit longer, okay? You can describe yourself a little bit longer. Same thing with the experience. Now, your experience here can be a simple copy and paste of your experience, your education, your skills on your resume with the difference that on LinkedIn, you can spend a little bit more time, a little bit more line describing what you have done. So your resume, remember, super concise, super short, one page. LinkedIn, you have the luxury of having more space. You can fill as much as you want. <clears throat> now let's go to the skills section. Skills section, which is here, okay? Super important. Now, you can add as many skills as you want. You see here uh, all of the skills uh, in my profile, but only the first three skills will be visible to anyone without go to show more. So 
it goes without saying, find in all of the job descriptions which are the skills that are most required and put those skills in the first three places. Okay. <clears throat> this is a good uh, chance for me also to give you the Facebook group, Love This Job. Uh, what, I, what I like to do here is that people in this group, they can connect to themselves, you know, they can connect to each other, okay, and start endorsing each other's skills. This is very important, this network exercise, because the LinkedIn, unfortunately, works uh, exactly like a social network. And the more active you are, the easier it will be that a recruiter will look for you. And guys, this is crazy. Let me just let me just um, just share this with you. I think you can see my here on the side. You can see you can see my my chat. For example, she is a recruiter, and it's crazy that every time that I, I have a pretty good network, but every time that I that I post something and people interact with my post. I get some recruiter looking for, looking for me. Now, that's, that's why, because the more active you are, the more LinkedIn will show your profile to recruiters. So connect to as many people as you, as you, as you can, that you know, interact with each other, share content, and, and, and be active because LinkedIn will praise you, okay? It takes some time, especially at the beginning, but it is so much worth it. <clears throat> Again, any questions on, on, on LinkedIn, you guys let me know and I, and I will address it. Okay, as we said, network on LinkedIn. You can use the Facebook group, connect to each other, find yourself on, um, on uh, find each other on, uh, on LinkedIn, connecting. I will share a post. You can connect. You can comment to that post and connect to each other. You know, and, and here you can see each other's name. Maybe you can also see each other's uh, emails. Maybe in, in the in the chat of this meeting. I'm not sure, but please, guys, connect to each other. Help you. Help yourself. Help each other. Um, how we can do that? Endorse a skill and endorse a skill back. Uh, back, and with the keywords, finding the best skills. Share content. Now, if you create your own content, that's always better. But you can also get a lot of visibility by sharing someone else's content. Let me give an example. You want to be, for example, in the geoscience uh, field. Perfect. Go on LinkedIn, follow all of the main companies that are in geoscience, follow all of the main um, people who work in those uh, sectors, connect to them, talk to them, and share relevant posts on that area. Being active, show that that is what you do, that is what you're interested into, and, and connect and create your network surrounding your area of interest. This is so powerful. Again, this is a longer game. It will take a few weeks to work. It will take a little bit of determination and dedication, but ah, it works so well. Um, and <coughs> I'm sorry. And finally, uh, you can use uh, groups that are on LinkedIn. Now, I prefer maybe Facebook groups; are, they are a little bit more active. But you can find very good groups on link on, on LinkedIn. Join that group. Look at all of the people that are in that group. Connect to those people. Start sharing ideas. Use some posts that have been uh, uploaded on those uh, groups, uh, reshare them, and the more active, the better. It will take time. It's a little bit of a social network, but it is so much worth it. <clears throat> just let's do now, let me just take a sip of water. All right. Let's do a quick, a quick global recap. The resume has to be short, clear, numerical results with keywords and non-technical still you know, linked with the keywords. LinkedIn, 
your, we saw how to do a good header, a lot of keywords. Then your skills, most important, the, the three top skills are the most important. Study the job descriptions and you will find those. And finally, very crucial network. Connect to as many people as possible and help each other. Now, it is not over. As said, I have a, a YouTube channel. You can um, join the channel Tales of Startup. I'll, I'll send you the link in a, in a second. And if you have any questions, please ask and uh, I'll be glad to address any, any issue, any, anything that you would like to, to discuss. Okay, thank you, Engineer uh, Gali. We don't have any uh, questions on LinkedIn part. Okay, now, let me see. Yes. Can we have okay. these slides? Okay, we have uh, a question. Can we get the slides, please? Hmm. <laughs> okay, I've never, I've never shared my slides, but yes, I, yes, yeah, sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. I prepared. Um, let me. So what I what I prepared it was uh, this one, which is let's say the, the recap. It's a it's a short one page uh, um, PDF with all of the links that you can that you can use. Uh, but yes, I mean I can I can definitely export the, the slides into PDF format and I can can give it to you. No, no problem. All right. Pietro, thank you very much. It was an uh, amazing session as usual. Absolutely. And I think, guys, we will connect very soon. I think we will connect tomorrow for the um, Q&A, you know, <laughs> for the um, how to address the question, the interview part. So which are the most important questions to answer, how to prepare for that, and so, and so on. And this will be tomorrow at the same time, correct? Correct. Yes. Ah, I see another question. Uh, in the field, HR manager, what skills we need? In the field of HR manager, what skills we need to get a job in this opportunity? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I just received another question that's from, uh, I, I'm not sure from who, uh, in the field of HR manager, I, I think in the field of HRM, so you, I think you mean HR manager, right? Uh, what skills we need to get a job um, in this uh, field, I guess. So the only thing is uh, HRM, do you mean HR manager question? Uh, because you know that that's another thing. You know, we have so many acronyms. That's why some you know most uh, of the time maybe it is human resources uh, management. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. HR. Yeah. Human resources. Yeah. So in the in the human resources, that's that's very interesting. Let me show you. That's that's fine. Uh, that's funny because you see we have the perfect examples right here, uh, which is Beatrice. She is a, a super HR. Um, so um, again, what you see in her examples, you know, um, usually they, they have a lot of strategic leadership, um, diversity, inclusion. Um, there are, it depends a lot on the um, training that, for example, you have also training, you can have public speaking, you can have empathy, which is a very important skills uh, for HR. But again, but again, don't rely on what I say, rely on science. So look at as many job descriptions as you can, and you will find the best, the most requested keywords um, for that job uh, description. So let me, this is, this is what, for example, this is what these guys do. When you have to create, when they have to create your resume, they take your resume, they will create a, a very attractive resume, catchy, but then there is all of the artificial intelligence. What they do, they look, they look for which role you're applying, they scan the web, they find all of the best keywords and all of the most requested skills, and they find the match between those skills 
and what is in your resume. And that's what you will discuss then in person with them after they created that. So the same process, you can do it of course, by, of course by, by, by yourself. Probably you won't have the artificial intelligence, but still you can look at as many job descriptions as you can and you can create that. So there are some skills that are always good, but rely on science. Look as many job descriptions as you can and use those to find the best skills, the most requested skills. Because I don't decide which are the skills. Unfortunately, no, no one of us decides that. The market tells us. So let's go and let's look what the market tells us. I think we have a, another one. Yes, yes, of course, human resource manager. Yeah, okay. So yes, I think that, um, that covers that. Now I have sent you a lot of links. Uh, <coughs> so <coughs> let's, let's connect. This is my LinkedIn profile. Um, just um, connect with me whenever, whenever you want. I hope this is helpful. Um, use, the, use the link to um, job wizard that I sent you. No matter if you don't want the, you know, the pro service, but download the, um, the free templates. You can go there, you can download the free templates. That, those are very helpful. And uh, I had so many good feedbacks on that. And many people have used that successfully to find a job and to improve their resume. Any other question? Feel free to ask, always reachable. And guys, it was a pleasure. And uh, I wish you a very, very, very good evening. And we will see each other tomorrow, I think. OK, thank you, and uh, Pietro, very much for this uh, interesting picture. Uh, we have just another question, please. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Mohammed Osk. Camps, events, and journeys, field trips related to geology can be concluded in resume? Or not? Uh, can I change a little bit? Um, can you can you be more specific? Um, can journeys related to geology? Hmm. That's, he that's wants a, to add uh, a field trip. Seems like he did the camps and field trips. Uh, he's asking, is it uh, okay to add this to uh, his resume or not? Yes. Uh, uh, interesting. Interesting. That's, that's a little bit borderline. So. Um, let's find a way to, to include that. So that can be, for example, um, think about what have, you, what have you done in the journey? Have you discovered, have you learned something that is relevant for the job? If yes, perfect. You can, you can rephrase that, for example, as a field visit uh, or a field site visit or something, something like that. And, uh, and, and put, let's say, the achievement. So what have you learned? For example, first-hand experience with this kind of formation. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you have analyzed some samples uh, or, or, or stuff like that. If you have learned something that can be relevant and useful for the job, yes, we can find a way to fit it in, in, your, in your resume. Hope that, uh, that helps. Yeah. Mm. Okay, thank you, uh, Engineer Pietro, very much. Absolutely. Any questions that you might have later, you have my LinkedIn uh, profile. Just add me, and um, and we can we can talk we can talk more there. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. Pietro, thank you very much, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Looking forward for it. Bye, guys. Okay. Professor, thank you very much. Thank you.